Fibonacci is considered to be one of the best mathematicians of all time, and one of my personal favorites. He introduced the Hindu Arabic numeral system and the Fibonacci sequence all through his book, The Libro Base. Fibonacci's name is actually Leonardo of Pisa, Leonardo Pisano, and a few others, but today we call him Fibonacci. Carl Boyer refers to Fibonacci as, without a doubt, the most original and most capable mathematician of the medieval Christian world. Fibonacci was born in Pisa, Italy. He was the son of a wealthy merchant and therefore traveled a lot with his father. He grew up in North Africa where he was educated and later traveled extensively around the Mediterranean coast. He would have met with many merchants and learned their systems of doing arithmetic. In 1202, he published the book Libera Base and introduced the Hindu Arabic system to Western Europe. Oh, Fibonacci, why are you so sad? Eh, the Romans only want to use the alphabet for numbers. All it is, it's a I, a V, a I, a V, a C, a M, O. Oh, Fibonacci, you are crazy. Of course, the Romans want to use. It's a Roman numeral. What could be better? Ah, but see, I, Fibonacci, have traveled the world and discovered a better method. With these nine numbers and the signs, the theorem, any number can be represented. You a genius, Fibonacci. Well, maybe not quite like that. Essentially, he introduced the system we use today. Before Fibonacci, Roman numerals were used extensively in Europe. There was no zero. Another of his great accomplishments that was introduced in the Libera Base was the Fibonacci sequence. The sequence goes like this. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one, thirty-four, fifty-five, eighty-nine, one forty-four, etc. If you've never heard of this sequence, this probably makes no sense. So I will explain. Every number after the first two is the sum of the preceding ones. So zero plus one equals one. 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, 3 plus 5 equals 8, 5 plus 8 equals 13, 8 plus 13 equals 21, 13 plus 21 equals 34, and so on. Also, a perfect spiral can be created from these numbers. You start with a 1 by 1 square, then another 1 by 1 square, then a 2 by 2 square, then a 3 by 3 square, a 5 by 5 square, an 8 by 8 square, 21 by 21. When you draw a line through them, it will create a spiral. This is called the golden spiral. So what? So what's the big deal? Well, it turns out that these numbers show up in nature all the time. It begs the question, is God a mathematician? As a little kid, when I first discovered this sequence, I became enamored with them and would try seeking them out in nature. Ever wonder why it's lucky to get a four-leaf clover? Well, it's because it's rare. Three-leaf clovers are extremely common, but a four-leaf kind of goes against nature. Notice the number I'm talking about, four. It's not part of the Fibonacci sequence, but three is. This is not just limited to clover. You can see this throughout nature. So let's take a look. And finally, the Fibonacci numbers can be used to calculate the golden ratio, known as phi. Phi is an irrational number. To get phi with the Fibonacci numbers, you take any Fibonacci number and divide by the number before it. 
for example, 5 divided by 3, or 8 divided by 5, or 13 divided by 8. The higher you go in the sequence, the closer you'll get to phi, the golden ratio. Phi appears in the proportions of the human body, the proportions of many other animals, plants, DNA, the solar system, art and architecture, music, and much more. It's everywhere. We owe a lot to Fibonacci and his keen observations. I hope you will seek out more of his great works and watch for the ratios of nature. My name is Bradley Moore, and this presentation was for the History of Mathematics, Mayville State University. Thanks for watching.